Hello and welcome to an overview of how you can use vCenter Operations Management Suite to identify and solve capacity problems in your private cloud environment. Today's demonstration will be using three of the products included in the suite. vCenter Operations Manager, which provides an operations dashboard along with performance and capacity management. vCenter Chargeback Manager for visibility into cost savings gained from optimizing virtual resources and vCenter Orchestrator for a user-friendly way to customize and automate workflows based on business processes and needs. Now let's begin with the dashboard view of vCenter Operations Manager. This dashboard provides us visibility into our private cloud environment, and it is organized by our immediate issues, health, future issues, risk, as well as opportunities for us to optimize, efficiency. Let's begin by clicking on the Environment tab, where we can see an overview of our entire environment on a single screen. Let's focus on this Risk Badge as a way to spot any future or upcoming issues. The Risk Supermetric is a combination of multiple sub-badges, including Time Remaining, which identifies when you will be likely to run out of a specific resource, Capacity Remaining, which highlights how many more VMs you could add to your environment, Stress, which spots any chronic stress issues in the environment, as well as a standards badge, which identifies any compliance or configuration issues in the environment. Today, let's investigate this data store that has an orange status. To find out more about it, we can simply click on the data store icon to investigate further. Now, by mousing over the icon, we can see that the capacity score for this data store has dropped down to 1. Now, let's change our view by clicking on the capacity badge and get more details. In this view, our data store icon is displayed as red. Its capacity score has dropped down to 1 because it is running out of disk space. Please note that when we click on an object, all the objects in the hierarchy are highlighted as well. This will help you more quickly drill down into the root cause of any performance or capacity issues. Now let's click on the Dashboard tab. Now this is not the world-level dashboard we were looking at in the beginning. This is the dashboard of our data store that we're investigating. The tabs in VCOps show you information in context of the object that you are investigating. So from this view, we see our risk supermetric score is 90 and that the object has turned orange. Let's scroll down to look at the capacity remaining score. Once again, we see the capacity remaining score has dropped down to 1 and we cannot add any more VMs. Let's switch our view again by clicking on the capacity remaining tab. This brings us to the Planning tab in vCenter Operations Manager. This tab provides several views that can help us identify the capacity issues of our data store. For example, we're looking at the Virtual Machine Inventory list, which provides a list of all the VMs that reside on this data store. We can see that there are six virtual machines hosted here. So this is where we can begin to look for any opportunities to optimize. For example, are there any powered off or idle virtual machines that we can retire? To find out, let's click on the Powered Off Virtual Machines list, which shows, in this case, that all six virtual machines are powered off. So these virtual machines are taking up significant disk space that could be reclaimed if these machines were deleted. VCOps can also generate these views automatically as reports. For example, these capacity optimization reports can be generated on demand, or they could be scheduled to run at regular intervals, and we can create them in different formats, such as PDF or CSV files. Now let's look at the Powered Off Virtual Machines PDF, which shows us the same information that we were looking at in the dashboard view. So, to this point, we've been able to use vCenter Operations Manager to quickly and easily identify capacity issues, as well as potential opportunities for us to optimize our environment. Now, we may still need to persuade the virtual machine owners to act on these recommendations, but this is an easy way to let vCOps do some of the hard work for us. Next, let's look at the integration with vCenter Chargeback Manager that brings in cost visibility. We can now associate cost savings with the recommendations from vCOps to help convince the appropriate stakeholders. vCenter Chargeback Manager pulls current resource utilization details and future trends from VC Operations Manager, and then it applies the appropriate cost models to show us the current cost as well as the projected future cost. It allows us to break down the cost per resource, like CPU, disk, memory, network, and it will even provide us a cost per day into the future. v 
vCenter Chargeback Manager will also provide us cost optimization reports based on the recommendations from vCenter Operations Manager. Here we can see the cost associated with our six powered off virtual machines. The report also shows us the amount of storage that can be recovered, as well as the cost savings that we can achieve if these six powered off virtual machines are deleted, again giving us the information we need to better communicate with our stakeholders. Next, let's shift our focus and talk about how vCenter Operations Manager integrates with vCenter Orchestrator to allow us to automatically remediate problems like this in our private cloud environment. vCOps generates alerts based on badge scores. Here we see an alert that vCenter Operations Manager has generated for our data store, which is running out of capacity. We can configure VC Operations Manager to send out SNMP traps for each of these alerts to a VCO instance. And we can write workflow policy using vCenter Orchestrator to capture these SNMP traps from vCenter Operations Manager and automatically take action for us. Here we can see a workflow that was written to capture the capacity alerts coming from VC Ops. When vCenter Orchestrator sees a capacity alert from vCOps, it launches the vCenter Operations Manager remediation workflow to automatically resolve the capacity issue. Now let's examine that workflow in more detail. To begin, the workflow gets the name of the data store for which the alert was generated. And then for that data store, it identifies the powered off virtual machines and all the snapshot files associated with those VMs. As you know, virtual machine snapshots are a major cause of storage capacity issues, so deleting those snapshots is an easy way to reclaim capacity and help resolve our capacity problems. Now, the workflow continues by preparing a report and emailing that to the appropriate stakeholders. Here's an example of what an email generated from the workflow might look like. It lists the powered off virtual machines, as well as the snapshot files that are associated with each of those VMs. Now, if we wish to, we could also extend this workflow to add approvals from the appropriate VM owners and then only delete the virtual machines based on the expressed approval of each of the owners. So to recap, we've seen how vCenter Operations Manager can help you easily identify capacity issues and help you find potential opportunities to optimize your environment. We've also seen how vCenter Chargeback Manager can add the context of cost visibility to the recommendations that come from vCOps in order to better inform our virtual machine owners of potential savings. And we saw how the integration with vCenter Orchestrator allows us to automate capacity remediation using workflows triggered from alerts. For more information about the VC Operations Management Suite, please visit VMware.com. Thank you.